Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This video module is going to be on rational behavior and choices under constraints. We will consider uh, the impact of, of efficiency improvements on individual uh, choices and how they might affect uh, management uh, decisions and, and policies. Economists are fond of, of saying that their discipline, economics, is founded on the notion of scarcity. Uh, by scarcity, we simply mean uh, that people have far more wants that they would like to satisfy than they have resources in order to satisfy uh, those wants. Uh, scarcity implies that people cannot have everything uh, that they want. It implies that they must do the best they can or that they must maximize uh, within uh, constraints. For economists, uh, uh, they start uh, their theorizing by assuming that people behave rationally. Rational behavior has a very special meaning to economists. It is those uh, actions that are intended to maximize an individual's well-being. There are three presumptions underlying the economist's notion of rational behavior. The first presumption is that people are capable of, of determining exactly what they want, at least within uh, limits. There's also the presumption uh, that people are perfectly capable of ordering uh, their wants from most preferred to uh, least preferred. And there is the presumption that they are able to consistently choose among uh, their ordering in order to maximize uh, their well-being. Now in order to uh, illustrate uh, the problems of choice under constraint, the economists oftentimes go to something called a production possibility curve or a consumption uh, possibility curve. Here we have a world in which we have an individual student who is taking uh, two courses and this individual wants to learn the material in these two courses. Uh, organizational behavior on the one hand and economics uh, on the other hand. You might in fact be taking these two courses um, uh, right now. Now the individual operates under constraints, that is the individual if, if he or she uh, applies all of his time available for study to learning organizational behavior then he might or she might be able to learn as much as B1 uh, economics. If that individual uh, applies all of the time to uh, OB then that means the individual will learn uh, zero uh, economics. On the other hand, the individual can apply all of his or her effort uh, to the study of economics, in which case the individual would learn uh, E1 uh, in economics, but of course zero in organizational uh, behavior. The individual, of course, if, if he or she is at uh, combination B1, that individual can, in fact, reduce the amount of time spent on organizational behavior and in doing so uh, can indeed um, uh, learn uh, some economics. The individual can, in other words, choose combination A or combination B, or for that matter, the individual can choose combination C, uh, B3 economics, and I'm sorry, B3 of organizational behavior and E3 of economics. Uh, by the same token, the person can choose combination D or little e and so on down uh, to combination uh, F in which he learns uh, only ec economics. Uh, this means that the individual can, uh, cannot uh, achieve combination G or any point above uh, this production uh, possibility curve. If the individual is at uh, H, uh, then that individual is clearly not maximizing because the individual could move to a combination uh, D in which case the individual uh, could learn more economics and more organizational uh, behavior. Now you may wonder why we draw the uh, curve uh, downward whereas there's always a, a trade-off. We do that uh, for the most part in the textbook and in these modules simply for matter of simplicity of drawing. But I will grant you there can be some interaction between uh, the study of organizational behavior and the study of economics in such a way that the uh, production possibility curve looks like uh, this, that is, is bowed out. That is, the individual could be at combination A, 
And in being at combination A, the individual learns uh, no uh, economics. Well, if the individual applies some of his or her time to the study of economics, it is possible that the individual could move to a combination like B. That is, the individual could learn more organizational behavior and more uh, economics. Uh, why? Uh, economics uh, makes, um, makes understanding of organizational behavior um, uh, all the easier. The connection between organizational behavior and economics may be a bit strained, but suppose we had math up here on the vertical axis. Clearly, uh, if you study all math, uh, you might learn something like uh, this point. If you apply your time to the study of, of economics, you might be able to learn uh, more math, simply because it makes study of math more interesting. Well, the individual could move to a point like C by allocating more time to economics and, and to a point like D. But at some point, the individual is going to find uh, that as uh, he or she applies more time uh, to the study of economics, uh, the study of organizational behavior uh, goes down. And the individual is going to move uh, down here. Uh, and the moral of the story is that the individual is actually going to operate uh, within this range of the curve. Why? Because if in fact you're at B1, why not move some of your time to the study of economics and go to a point like B? Why not go to a point like C when you can get more of uh, both? Well, the moral of the story is the relevant uh, choice set uh, for the individual is this downward sloping uh, part. And I just might add here that if the individual is at point uh, E1, then uh, the individual would definitely move to G and then to H. Why? Because by moving some time out of economics, the person can not only learn more economics. So the moral of the story is that, that this kind of production uh, possibility curve uh, uh, can exist, but the relevant section is the downward sloping uh, part.